Hey everyone, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. The year has just started and Shopify already released a ton of new features and updates for 2023. Today, we'll be going over the most important ones for developers, and we can also create up to three detailed follow-up videos. So make sure to leave a comment what you would like to learn more about. But for now, let's have a look. All right, so then let's get started with hydrogen version two and oxygen. And just as a quick reminder, if you don't know what hydrogen is, it's a React-based framework for building custom storefronts. And custom storefront means that instead of using a regular theme, you're creating a more unique shopping experience, yeah, namely a custom storefront. So for example, this could be the interface of a smart fridge where people can buy groceries, or it could be a store inside a video game where people can make in-game purchases. Or it could also be a website just built on completely different web technologies. But the clue is, you're still using the Shopify backend to manage your products, collections, customer accounts, payments, and so on and so forth. So you're leveraging all these existing e-commerce features, and then you just connect both sides by using the storefront API. So that's the concept of a custom storefront in a nutshell. And that's also exactly what Hydrogen does. It's a framework that helps you build custom React-based websites instead of using regular themes. Okay, now when you build a custom website like that, you also have to host it somewhere. And that's where Oxygen comes into play. So Oxygen is the hosting solution that Shopify provides. And that's also why you hear them go together oftentimes, Hydrogen and Oxygen. Hydrogen being the framework for building the website and then Oxygen being the hosting solution that we can use. Okay, so far so good. But what's new with Hydrogen and Oxygen, you might be wondering. First of all, after Shopify and Remix joined forces towards the end of last year, Hydrogen is now fully built on Remix, offering improved performance powered by Remix's advanced capabilities. And if you never heard of Remix before, it's a framework that allows you to render code on the server, which tends to result in better performance and also better search engine optimization, as opposed to running React only on the client side. So it's kind of similar to what Next.js does, but one of the main benefits here is that Remix also offers defer streaming capabilities. And that means when a user clicks a button or clicks on a navigation item, we can go to the next page pretty much immediately. And then we only render the most critical items in the beginning. So for example, here there will be the search bar as it's like the most critical component on the search page. And for all the other elements, we put up a skeleton first or maybe some sort of loading icon. And then we wait for data to load up in the background which drastically improves the perceived loading times. Okay, now since this effect is a little hard to observe because hydrogen pages are so fast in general, let me show you how the page loads if we throttle the network to slow 3G internet. So now you can see the search bar loads first and becomes interactive. And for a brief moment, you can see the gray placeholder for the featured collection, and then the images replace everything once they load up. How cool is that? If you want to learn more about all the benefits of Remix, server-side rendering, client-side rendering, Hydrogen in general, let us know in the comments. And beyond that, Oxygen will now also be available on the plans Basic, Shopify and Advanced at no extra costs. Um, previously, it was only available on Shopify Plus. So if you can't wait to start experimenting, I'm sure this is good news for you as well. All right, next topic, Shopify's B2B APIs. So in the business to business space, merchants sell directly to other companies. And that's usually a bit more complicated than selling D2C direct to the consumer, because in B2B, oftentimes you would sell larger quantities. You might have multiple contact persons in one company, maybe multiple locations per company, maybe different price lists and product publications or custom pre-negotiated payment terms. And all these things are already available within the Shopify Plus B2B tools, as you just saw on the screen. Just the only thing that wasn't quite up to speed was the API. Here we only had access to a handful of endpoints and just a few features available. But now Shopify is massively expanding their admin API for B2B capabilities to provide developers with all the tools they need to build more apps and solutions that work directly within the admin experience. Now, speaking of apps, the next topic we'll be covering is called Build for Shopify. And this was first announced during summer editions last year. It's basically a new program that offers greater visibility and faster growth for apps that meet the highest quality standards. What it means in practice is that there's going to be a set of guidelines concerning your app safety, security, performance, ease of use, and other categories. And apps that follow these guidelines will get a build for Shopify badge throughout the App Store. 
They can also rank better in search results. They might be promoted on the App Store homepage and stories, in the admin dashboard or other places. Now, as soon as detailed guidelines are publicly available, you will find links in the description. But for now, just to give you an idea what specific examples might look like, if we take some from the category safety, security, and reliability, it might be things like, does your app comply with the App Store requirements? Or does your app comply with the Shopify API license? Or if we take some examples from the category proven usefulness, it would be something like, does your app meet the minimum number of installs? Or do you have a minimum amount of reviews? And then also how good is the overall rating? Or here we have two examples from the category ease of use. Um, is your app embedded into the admin dashboard? And are you using AppBridge? Or second, do you follow the best practices in terms of the design guidelines? So all these different things can factor in. And as I said, you will find detailed links in the description for everything we have so far. And I will also update these if anything changes in the future. All right, the next big update concerns Shopify Functions. And as a super quick reminder here, Functions were introduced as a new powerful way to extend or customize Shopify features by writing your own backend logic. And this was a pretty big paradigm shift because historically developers didn't have any tools for that. Technologies on the front end included Liquid and Hydrogen, and then database access was granted through the Shopify API. And if you wanted to augment the backend logic in any way, you had to write your own apps, figure out your own hosting, and then read and write from the database also via the API. Traditional apps also come with a few drawbacks though. So for example, you might face limited bandwidth if your server can't scale up that quickly. Um, this is particularly important if stores go viral or you have flash sales or TV commercials, for example. Or there are also certain parts that apps just can't reach. For example, the shipping logic or discount logic. And that's exactly where functions came into play. Um, for the first time ever, Shopify opened up parts of the backend logic. So your scripts could literally run on Shopify's infrastructure. And if you need a more detailed reminder, you can also check out our previous video on Shopify functions, where we go a bit more into the details. Now, what has changed since the last update, you might be wondering. And first of all, new areas will open up. These include delivery customizations, card and checkout validation, product bundles, payment customizations, and order routing. But if you ask me, the best news of all, <laughs> functions can now also be written in JavaScript. And that is awesome if you're like me, just too lazy to learn Rust. So if you want to learn more about that, let us know in the comments and check out the resources in the description. Okay, then off to the next type of apps. Check out UI extensions. Also pretty new, um, and they offer a new way of adding elements and customizations to the checkout of Shopify Plus stores. In the past, the only way to make checkout customizations was by texting the Shopify support team, and they would give you access to the checkout.liquid file, where you could just write regular HTML, CSS, JavaScript. They would then be rendered in the checkout. But this also came with two major drawbacks. First of all, you could introduce breaking changes, and then the checkout would stop working which is quite expensive on Shopify Plus stores. And the second challenge was that your code needed frequent maintenance. So whenever there was a checkout update, you have to catch up with changing elements and changing naming selectors and so on and so forth. So that's why during summer of last year, checkout UI extensions were introduced. And with them, we now have a way to bundle checkout customizations and then also distribute them on the App Store. We can use pre-built UI components like text blocks, choice lists, checkboxes, grid elements to speed up the development process and the components automatically inherit the merchant's branding. And then similar to themes, checkout extensions can also be adjusted and configured using the checkout editor if the elements are coded in a flexible way. And that in and of itself is pretty awesome. Updates we're now facing in this area include the new checkout app collection, which is essentially a collection on the App Store if merchants are looking to discover more apps that use checkout extensions. And this collection will also be promoted in the checkout customizer. So there's going to be a link to it for more visibility. Beyond that, app-powered UI extensions will now also be available on the order status page. That is pretty interesting. And UI extensions will also be able to make authenticated network calls, which might be interesting for loyalty programs or any other use case where you need to verify that you can trust the current user. Lastly, checkout extensions will now also be able to apply discount codes and gift cards and directly query the storefront API. And that's something traditional apps cannot do unless they're a sales channel. But now checkout extensions will be able to do that and Shopify takes care of all of the authentication 
So you only have to worry about making the queries and that gives you access to a lot more data because the Storefront API is already quite extensive. All right, now the last exciting update I wanna go over is a completely new concept called Meta Objects. And some of you might have already seen this in the admin dashboard because about one third of all stores had early access to this feature. And Meta Objects provide a new way to define and manage custom data models across a store. Now, the first question that I had when I heard this for the first time was how are meta objects different from meta fields? And it's actually not too complicated. So meta fields provide a flexible way to store additional information on already existing resources. For example, if you want to store the power plug type or ingredients or a suggested blog post directly on a product. Yeah, just any type of additional information that belongs right there. And meta objects, on the other hand, let us define completely new data models so let's say your store runs sales event on a regular, then you might want to create a sale event object. And then every event could have a title, maybe a starting date, an end date, and a collection of products that is promoted during that sale. Or let's say you're running a clothing store and maybe you collaborate with, with a lot of different designers. Maybe you want to have one page that shows all the different designers and their names and so on and so forth. Then you might want to create a designer object. So then every designer has a first name, a last name, a profile image, maybe their age, their own collection of products, maybe their own website, if you want to give a chance to promote it. And then you could use that data in your theme files and for example, render one profile card for each designer you work with. So in essence, we could say meta fields help you to augment existing data models like products or collections and meta objects let you define completely new data models like sale events, designer profiles, or whatever else you can come up with. And if you want to see a deep dive on meta objects, let me know in the comments. All right, that's it for today. Massive shout out to anyone at Shopify who helped with research or early access to the new documentations. Couldn't have done it without. And thank you for watching. I really hope you learned something new. And please let me know your favorite three topics in the comments. Uh, that would honestly mean the world. And yeah, beyond that, just have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.